Good afternoon, everyone. So many stories talking about the disappearance of flies, bees, mosquitoes, and ants across farms worldwide. Definitely has to be something with the UV shift. We got sunburned dolphins, sunburned whales. The eyesight of these insects is far different from the human. They see an UV and they see it a lower spectrum as well. So we're gonna be looking for shifts in the net radiation. Also these light wavelengths can affect behavioral ecology, which means when they eat, when they sleep, when they reproduce. Also light wavelengths can attract or repel different insects specifically yellow in orchards at night to turn off the feeding mechanism of insects. Green does the same thing. It affects the sleep and the eating patterns of different insects at 505 to 570 nanometers. You could even kill insects with different UV wavelengths. Indigo violet 417 kills mosquitoes. So it's all about the changes in the sun's UV output right now with the grand solar minimum intensification. What's gonna happen with our insect life that pollinates our crops globally? geoengineeringwatch.org showing increases at 250 and 300 nanometers in the UVB range. And inventor Lee Wheelbarger and myself discussed these changes in episode 23 of Mini Ice Age Conversations. And please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 while you're watching the video. So over the last two weeks, globally, there are a plethora of stories coming out talking about farms having no flies, no ants, lack of mosquitoes, and bees disappearing. And then there's so many videos coming out right now, missing flies, the canary in the coal mine. And it just leads into this whole Pandora's box of the insects and bees disappear. Definitely has to be based on the radiation output and the changes in the sun entering into this grand solar minimum on the 400 year cycle. They're even reporting this over in Europe and India as well. Now talking about UVB increases, sunburned dolphins, sunburned whales are becoming quite common now. And when we look at the sunburn map, I'm absolutely going to say that's off. Mr. MBB333 does a UV reading daily. And on the same day that he was showing 12.86 in California, this map here is only showing up to 10. So everything on the map is at least two indices lower than the real readings are. I guess this would be 11 plus. They don't tell you that it's 18 or 22 now, do they? They just say 11 plus. Now let's take a look at the insects. Their eyes are very different from ours. They see in different wavelengths than we do. Ants, flies, bees, how we as a human see a color in a flower left side yellow and how bees see that same flower in UV on the right. So if the UV is affected coming off the sun into a lower spectrum, more UVB basically, this is gonna start to affect how the interaction of the daylight with the actual eyes of these insects. If you get a high power light right in the middle of your eye, you're gonna shy away, you're gonna try to leave that area. So what happens if it's a global event where these insects are being bombarded with incredibly strong light, they would definitely be hiding during the day when they should be active. And then if it's at nighttime when they're not normally active and they can't see in the dark in infrared, then what happens? Their entire life cycle will be completely opposite. They'll starve to death, basically. Now, human vision versus insect sight. The eyes of insects are bichromatic or trichromatic seeing three or two different types of pigments with the receptors. Now the colors visible for insects are a higher frequency than what we can see as a human being. They can see in higher and lower frequencies of light than we can. So animals that can see in UV light, butterflies. So what's happening with the butterflies planet wide? Notice if there's more or less butterflies, the same exact thing will be happening to them. Reindeer also see in UV. So you got to be wondering what's happening with the reindeer population if they're also behaving strangely in their mating and migration patterns this year. Sockeye salmon, I'm curious how they're also going upriver with the intense UVB affecting their sight as well. It's all about the light change. Will it repel or will it attract and how will it affect these insects? So it's well known that 365 nanometer and attracts everything. That's why those bug lights are blue at night with those black lights. Flies are incredibly attracted to 365. 
And when we look at black lights, they peak right around 365. There's a well-known relationship between light wavelength and the behavioral ecology. Now these lights can repel or attract. They can also turn off, turn on the biological functions of an insect. Trying now with LED lights, if you can dial down and kick out the UV, you can help adjust and repel insects. Just as an example here, yellow fluorescent lamps used in greenhouses to eradicate and cause moths to starve to death, turn off their eating mechanism using yellow at night, like you'll see here. It has a direct effect on how moths go about their daily lives, reproducing, eating, and sleeping. Now we take a look at the wavelength range of the optical radiation within insect retina, and they're able to see all the way down to around 250, 220, somewhere around there. And also green fluorescent lamps have been used and developed for nocturnal moths in orchards, along with the yellow. These have a direct effect on how moths trigger their sense of uh, hunger to eat. And it turns it off so they don't eat. They don't go into the orchard. They don't lay the eggs. They don't want to feed on any of the fruits or leaves in the orchard. And this is a way to save the infestation. These lights operate on green right around 505 to 570. And then you can kill insects with visible light, specifically violet indigo around 417 nanometers. Different beetles, mosquitoes, these types of things. The mortality is highest at 467. And also with egg laying moths, the highest mortality is at 467. Another look at the lethal light here. Mortality is the highest in the high 400s. Now jumping over at geoengineeringwatch.org, if we're gonna to start to see shifts in the UV spectrum all the way down to UVC, we should start to see it in the lower edges of the UVB, which we start to see it at 250 now increasing and 300 as well. 300 is right at the low edge of the UVB, but 250 is way down in UVC range. So those are also upticking, definitely having an effect on how the insects are seeing, eating, and reproducing. This is several decade long measurement of UVB on the ground in selected cities. You can see around 2011 and 12, there was a bump, but then this suddenly stops right at 2013. Why not here for you? Also in the same study from 1978 to 2014, the average UVB was 19.68 kilojoules per square meter across the US. But that has been increasing as of late. Also taking a look at net radiation on a global map from NASA's Earth Observatory. 2006 definitely looks like a line between Northern and Southern hemispheres. Now compare that with March 2017. We'll put them side by side here and see if you notice any change. Also what's interesting, I found this fluorescent spectrum from PASCO. Now what they did was they used 405 nanometer light and it started to fluoresce up to 512 in different mediums that they were using. So now we need to ask the question, is this shift into UVB off our sun because we're going into the grand solar minimum? Is this starting to affect the nanometer output that insects are seeing of plants, soils, flowers, and anything on the Earth's surface because of these changes? If it is, then everything they've ever learned and everything they know and the programming of their DNA about how to see is completely thrown off right now. And since we rely so heavily on these insects, butterflies, and bees to pollinate our crops, you just have to wonder what's going to happen with the crop yield if these insects are not around and we're relying on the wind or birds to go from plant to plant or the wind to carry the pollen across fields. I don't know, there's going to be a definite reduction in crops due to non-pollination as well as what we've seen with weather wipeouts. I could see absolutely how they got lower yields back in the 1600s because if there were not as many insect pollinators at the time, that would definitely have a direct effect on yield. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you like the type of work I'm putting out, please consider supporting me on Patreon so I have more time to do this type of research. 
I have a new report coming out for all my Patreon subscribers of the rapid increase in the changes of the weather within the next six months leading to the next two years on our planet. I'll have that done in the next 24 hours and I'll send you out an email along with the video showing you what it's about.